I'm in Canada, in Toronto. Is there anybody here that you know of who uh, handles these matters? Regarding yeah, this is a, yeah, this is a great point. Um, and so, uh, yes, we, we've had trained people in, uh, you know, in this approach. Uh, and and there, there are some people in Canada. Now, um, to be fair, so, you know, our goal is best outcomes. Um, doc, there's Dr. Nipping, K-N-I-P-P-I-N-G, who took our training. Now, he's kind of decided he's trying to do things a little differently. So you may or may not be like the way he's doing them. Um, but, uh, but he's certainly one who has, who has trained in this area, who is in the Toronto area. Um, the other way, again, is to go on, uh, you know, just go on the website, um, Apollo Health Co., um, and look, and they're, they're, they can, you know, they can see or even, you know, contact them and just say who, who's in the Toronto area and we can give you others as well. Uh, but yes, there are a number of people in Canada, um, Dr. Uh, Vig, um, who, who's way out in Vancouver, but he's doing fantastic work there. Um, and there, you know, there are others as well. Uh, thank you so much for that. We have actually one more question coming back okay. in. I think Annette is back, if that's the same Annette. Let me go ahead and unmute you. Hi, Annette. Hi, I just have a quick question. I went on your website and the only providers I could find it within Las Vegas, within 50 miles, were two chiropractors. Would a chiropractor be able to do anything? So, yeah, this is a great point. So we've had people who've trained who are neuropsychologists, who are nurse practitioners, who are chiropractors, who are neurologists, who are endocrinologists, uh, and, you know, health coaches on and on and on and on and on. So the fact that someone's a chiropractor doesn't necessarily mean that they don't know this. Um, I would, I would check them. And I, the thing that I think is always easiest, find out how many people have they improved? Uh, and, you know, is this something that they're able to do? So we have chiropractors who are doing this very successfully and chiropractors who are doing this less successfully. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that that's all you could find in that area. Uh, but I, I would check with their office and ask, you know, do you have people that have improved? What tests can you do? Uh, and then, and then see, and then, and then the other possibility, um, there are some doctors getting fantastic results. Uh, for example, in San Diego, uh, Dr. Heather Sanderson, uh, and Dr. Wes Youngberg, two people in San Diego that are getting absolutely spectacular results. So you're not terribly far away from San Diego. That's something to think about. Also, uh, Palm Springs, uh, Dr. Jocelyn Brosfield getting uh, excellent results. So something else uh, to think about. So there are you know, different people uh, besides just those. Uh, and you know, maybe you want, because you can do a tele, you know, telehealth after the first visit typically, you might want to start by, uh, you know, by taking a little vacation for a day or two um, and get evaluated by one of those doctors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very much for that, Dr. Bredesen. As it yeah. turns out, we've got one more question okay. uh, coming in from David A. I'm going to unmute him. Hang on one second. Can hey. you hear me? We can hear you now, yeah. David. Hi. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, my first question is uh, the heavy metals. Would you recommend zeolites or oral chelation or IV chelation, or it just depends on the heavy metal? And should you get rid of parasites first before you do either getting rid of heavy metals or any kind of pathogens like Lyme disease? Is there a certain order to which you should address these issues? Yeah, you know, this comes up all the time. So first of all, yeah, as far as which heavy metals and what to do, it, it really depends on how much you have, which ones they are, uh, and, you know, wh and, and where your cognition is. In general, um, and we heard this in the previous talk, you know, go slowly. This is, a, this is a, not a sprint. Uh, this is a marathon. We want to slowly improve things. And people often will have a combination. They'll often have some heavy metals. The biggest one we worry about with cognitive decline is mercury. Mercury is the one that you can literally inject mercury into a brain in an animal and get Alzheimer type changes. It is associated with both the plaques and the tangles of Alzheimer's and relatively common contributor. However, the others can contribute, especially because they take away your detox. So things like lead and cadmium and arsenic and things like that uh, can be secondary contributors. And of course, there's been the association with aluminum for years that's been controversial. And that's still, the, the jury's really still out on that, but there's certainly an epidemiological association. Now, as far as Parasites, it, again, it depends on which ones. It depends on how you present. 
So people who present with more of that biotoxin-like illness, I would certainly want to deal with the parasites. Um, but also, you know, you don't want to leave the metals high and, you're, and you want to be able to gently, I kind of like, you know, more gentle approaches. If you really get into the heavy chelation, um, again, just as we heard before, this starts moving things out. Um, and once you, you have to remember, it's not perfect. When you're moving these toxins out of organs, for example, you're not ferrying them out perfectly. Some of it's dropping off in your blood. So you can create ongoing toxicity by being too exuberant with trying to detox. So take it slowly, keep on going, keep removing it. And you want to change that balance from I'm accumulating them to I'm detoxing. Now, interestingly, when we first looked at these people, we were so surprised. So many people are presenting right around the time of perimenopause and menopause or andropause. And it turns out that so many are, prevent, are presenting with a toxin associated illness. And it looks like what's happening is when you're young, your story, you know, you're trying to do everything, you're detoxing, you're eliminating, you're, you're metabolizing, but you're also storing these in your bones and storing them in other organs. Now, as you get a little older, you go through this so-called osteoclastic burst for several years, where you're now emptying these things back in as your bones are changing into your bloodstream. And so you're now seeing people who have this presentation with toxicity. So again, it depends on what the metals are, or what, what the uh, pathogens are, how extensive these are, your overall presentation, and how you do. Some people really like to do more on the cube. Some people, for the ones who are pretty toxic, I loved at the beginning uh, some, uh, some intravenous glutathione. Other people like intranasal glutathione. Um, uh, I'm careful typically with the, um, you know, with the chelators because you, you can be kind of too, too exuberant with that. So be careful about that. And again, go to someone who is very experienced with detox. Mm -hmm.